Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Very randomly, I found that um, other chess YouTuber, the Chess Nerd, has um, a 10 minute rapid like tournament going on right now. And I was I, I was just happening to be going to record a, record a video anyway. But um, yeah, then this happened. It's a six round, 10 minute plus zero tournament. And I was like, why not play? Why not? It'll be interesting. So let's see what we can do. This will probably be a bit of a longer video. Um, but I will timestamp... Well, yeah, I'll, I'll timestamp everything in the description, like in terms of which game it is. Um, and I'll just pause in between games if there's like a particularly long wait. So we have a Karo Khan Tartakawa. Knight f3 is a bad move. Uh, bishop d6 is the main line. And um, I, if you check out the previous video, yeah, the previous video on my channel, I played this exact line, we'll see how far we uh, follow it, in an over-the-board classical game against an opponent that just needed to draw against me. Uh, if you watch that video, there'll be more context as to why. But that was the situation. And that was an insane game. So I probably will forget to link it up here, to be uh, quite honest. But if you just check out my channel, go to videos, and then obviously it'll be the one before this. Oh, my opponent's playing this in an aggressive way. He's going to try and queenside castle. I could take the knight and double the pawn structure. The rook going to the G file is kind of scary. That is kind of scary. So, I kind of don't want to do that, to be honest. Ah, that's annoying. Um, I'm going to go knight d7. Because, to be honest, right? <clears throat> As I explained in that video, this knight doesn't have a whole lot of forward movement anyway. So, even though it's unpinned itself, I mean, where is it going to go? If it goes to, like, h4, big deal. Like, maybe it's going into f5. But at the end of the day, if my bishop gets kicked around, I can always just drop back to e6. And if my opponent does castle queenside, that's just going to be a nice attacking bishop, really. So I'm I'm not too worried. Not too worried. Um, I think c5 might be a major idea for me because my knight and bishop will link up there. Also, the knight is now pinned to the rook, so it's going to struggle to move. Rook e8 is a typical move in these kinds of um, structures. C5, though, does look pretty tempting, and I think I'm going to play it. My opponent could advance his pawn to D5, but then I'll probably go for, like, A6, um, D5, maybe C4, B4, and go for, like, C3, which would be quite a nice um, pawn storm on the queen side. Now, if the pawn does go to d5, yes, that is a passed pawn, but it also gives us access to the c5 and e5 squares, which we control very well. And although it's a passed pawn, like, it's not getting through anytime soon. My pieces are doing, well, literally every single one of my pieces can see a square on the d file, bar my king. Okay, h3. I mean, going to h5 and, like, encouraging g4 seems pretty silly. So I'm going to go back to e6, um, target the a2 pawn. And a lot of the time it's a blunder to take it because of like b3 and the king can trap the bishop. But maybe not. Ooh, we have bishop d5 here pinning the knight to the rook. We also have c4 attacking the bishop. We could take, but then his knight just gets in. We could take on a2, like I was mentioning before. After b3, a5, king b2, a4, king a2, pawn b3, king b3. After queen b6, I think white loses. I don't think he can go into this line. And even if he does win my bishop, worst case scenario is I have to sack the bishop for a pawn. And I get two pawns for a piece. And those two pawns are obviously on my opponent's uh, like queenside where he's castled. So 
they're going to be very damaging to his structure regardless. Um, yeah, I think A5 is just good. Yeah, let's do it. There's no other good way to go after this bishop because let's say why, I don't know, plays like H4, then A4 is like an insanely big problem now. And white is going to get absolutely crushed. So if he's going to go after this bishop, which b3 indicates that he is, he needs to commit to it. Because if he doesn't commit to it, all the all that the move b3 does is waste a move for white and provide a hook for my a pawn to open up my rook, right? If my opponent had instead decided, by the way, I don't know which the right way to go about this is for white. I'm just stating what I think about the situation. If my opponent had instead decided that he was going to ignore my attack on the queen side, because my bishop isn't actually threatening anything, right? And he was just going to continue barreling down, then fair enough. Um, we have some threats here. If my bishop can make it to a6, sorry, a3, that would be checkmate. So I don't really want to take with the bishop because then he can trade bishops. I instead want to take with a knight. So if he trades bishops with me, I'm threatening bishop to a3 mate. If king b2, a4, that's even worse, because after I take on b3, it's double check, but the b3 pawn is also defended by my knight, so my opponent can't actually take it. And the c file would open, my queen can probably get in somewhere. I'm threatening, like right now, Maybe I'm threatening knight d3, queen d3, bishop a3, king d2, and like a4. Maybe. Or, or maybe I can just go a4 anyway and try and pile pressure onto the b3 pawn. Because at the end of the day, if this bishop dies because the king runs over there, that's a lot of time that white would have to invest into taking that bishop. And, you know, these pieces are pretty scary looking. And he goes for it. He goes for it. So I think a4 is the only reasonable response. I think. Again, this is like somewhat speculative in all honesty. I haven't fully calculated this attack. But one, I think it's an interesting attack. And two, I don't think that's a good way for white to try and deal with the attack. I think that's probably losing. Because now my bishop escapes. Now if I take here, then white can do stuff like this and this. Um, so if I take with a knight, that's probably better. Uh, let me think a second. I could go queen b6, bishop c5, queen b3, king c1, rook c8, king d1. It's very... Oh no, we can't go to d1. That looks really good actually. Queen b6 might be... An even bigger problem for white. So okay, you can't really take the knight. If you take the bishop, again, queen b3, king a1. Um, I mean, I could just take, 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 and I'm. It, it has to be winning. This has to be winning. I refuse to believe it's not. Also, if rook takes, I could go rook takes, king takes, rook a8, king b1, queen b3, queen b2, queen d3, queen c2 loses to rook a1 check. Yeah, this should be just completely winning. Let's take. And so I don't really want to take this with my bishop. Although I could go for this. 
actually. <clears throat> I'm sure Rook C8 works, but this might just be easier. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go for it. At the end of the day, at the very least, we're up two pawns in this situation. But, like, we're probably just going to mate him. So that's not really, not really a problem. Not really a problem. I'm also just thinking, maybe I should play all of the rounds of this tournament. But split each game up into its own video. I might actually do that. Maybe I'll get hated for that. And like release them daily. But I think that'd be kind of a cool concept. So maybe I lied earlier on in this video. But uh, I don't know what that does. Yeah, we just give this check. Absolute domination from the bishops and the queen, by the way. Of course, the c-file is also open now, so this is just insanely lost. Um, but yeah, I, I think the move b3 was probably just a terrible, terrible idea from white. Uh, let's do a quick game review. Let me... Yeah, okay, you can't see the eval bar, but you can see the board. Um, that was not a very high-level game at all. I actually blundered the game away. So in this position, c5 was the wrong idea. I should have gone rook e8, bishop back, or rook c8. There's so many mistakes. c5, h3, bishop e6. I'm losing. Here, 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 here. Why is this losing? Oh, because I, I just can't defend my minor pieces. Oh, damn. Well, luckily you didn't see that. Bishop a2, yeah, b3 is a mistake. a5 is a miss. c4 is the idea. Bishop takes. Oh, then we have mate. And you can't do this because of mate. I probably should have seen that. If king b2, we just win a bishop. Yeah, no, that, that just straight up wins a piece. So that was scuffed. But dc5, knight c5 is a blunder. Again, I missed this idea of taking care of check and going after the minor pieces. He's still winning, but he needs to find this bishop takes idea. Rook a1 loses the game though. a b3, c b3, queen b6. I had this, which I mean I considered, and I'm sure it was winning, but I liked queen b6. Bishop c5. The reason is, right, so... The computer likes bishop c4 or queen c3 here, just defending b3, right? But the natural inclination of white is probably to try and grab a piece if he can, like if he can get away with it, but you just can't. You need to defend b3, and then, you know, it's just completely game over. White has to give up his queen, and you're just going to lose absolutely everything. So there's no point really playing on. Uh, not not a great game, in all honesty, but we get away with it, and the opening went pretty well. This is all, like, what I know, but here, I'm not entirely sure. Knight d7, the computer doesn't love. It likes knight a6, and if this, h3 like this, bishop c7, let's say, something like this, rookie a, castle, maybe four. Five. That's just a fork. Interesting. But I guess if you get rid of the light squared bishop with it taking on a6, you neutralize a good bit of the white attack because that's probably white's strongest attacking piece is that bishop. Well, as we saw in the game, because if white had noticed how strong this check was, we would have lost on the d file. We would have just completely lost. So, eh, interesting game. And I think I am just going to, I'm going to release these as um, one game video episode, sort of, in this kind of format. So if you guys do give me um, suggestions from this game, I'm not going to be able to implement them for next video because I will have already recorded it. But 
I would potentially fancy doing more videos like this in terms of this kind of style of tournament type thing. I don't know if you guys would be interested in that, but um, I hope this at least provided an interesting insight into the Karo Khan and just like rapid chess in general. Maybe it was even entertaining. Maybe we can win this tournament. That'd be pretty cool. I'll see you guys in the next video and check out whatever YouTube is recommending to you over there because it thinks you're really going to like it.